Strikers do perceive versus Israel Adesanya as a close fight, and here's why. For the last few years, the South Africans become a bit of a laughing stock within the MMA community. But I think now it's high time we take him a little bit more seriously. Winning six straight in the UFC is no easy task, and now that he's the number one contender, people are still having doubts about him. And to be honest, I can sort of see why. In almost every one of his wins in the UFC, he has faced an overwhelming amount of adversity, and yet he comes back every single time. Now, I'm going for a bit of an unscripted style with this video, just thought I'd try it out. If you do like this sort of content, like and subscribe. Only a small percentage of people who watch these videos actually are. I'm so close to 10,000 subscribers, so you could help me out with that final little push. His fighting style is deceptively good too. I'd sort of describe him as somewhat of a drunken master. I think that's the best way of describing it. Similar to something like Prince Nassim from the boxing realm. And that's just on the feet. Don't forget his submission game either. Half of his professional wins have come via submission. In fact, looking at his career as a whole, only one of his 20 wins has even gone to a decision. If that isn't a clear indicator of the danger this guy presents, then I don't know what is. Now, the guys he's beaten too are legit contenders. Darren Till and Derek Prunson are no easy tasks. The jewel in his crown is obviously his most recent win over Robert Whittaker. Although the Reaper had lost to Adesanya twice, he had actually torn through the middleweight roster, and his last losses were to the champ. You could obviously make an argument for him being the best in the division, regardless of ranking. But I can honestly say I was happy to be proven wrong when Tariqas demolished Robert at UFC 290, and inside two rounds no less. And he beat him across every physical aspect, on the feet and on the ground, before finishing with a standing TKO. Now before this fight there was a lot of eyes on Drikus, after he stated that he went under nasal surgery to fix his oxygen levels. I mean he was claiming he was only getting 8% oxygen in his previous fights. And whilst I think those claims are certainly exaggerated, the surgery certainly helped. Just look at his performances before and after Robert Whittaker, he looks like a different man in that cage. Now with all this crazy drama about his heritage and all that with Adesanya, look, I'm just going to skip that. The real question is what are his actual chances of winning the strap? Well, Adesanya's accolades need little explanation, and if you want the rundown, you can check out my latest video on that. But as an elite level kickboxer, he obviously prefers the fight to stay standing. And if that's the case, it is obviously Adesanya's fight to lose. But if it does go to ground, which Drickers can certainly make happen, Adesanya could be in real trouble. His takedown defense is certainly admirable, but we saw how he did against the heavy opponent when he moved up to become double champ. Jan Blahovic absolutely dominated on the map. And with Drikas' size advantage, there's no reason this couldn't happen again. In terms of pure grappling credentials, I'd argue Drikas has the advantage here too. In fact, at a Submission Kings quintet event, he submitted all five members of the Gracie Barra team. I of course expect Eugene Behrman and the team at City Kickboxing to be helping Adesanya prepare for this in every way. I expect Drikas to come out fast and rushing, doing everything to push Adesanya against the fence to shoot for the takedown. And with that in mind, low kicks will likely be essential for Adesanya to slow Drikas down. Another crucial factor is of course the level of cardio. As I said, there's certainly still question marks on whether Drikas can hang at the top over 3 rounds, let alone 5. And to a man like Adesanya, 5 rounds is a walk in the park. He's done it many times before. And for that reason, I almost feel like Drikas' finishing record is somewhat of a detriment, you could say. The fact he finishes everyone he's fought so quickly means he doesn't really have a chance to test out his cardio. Churning out grueling decisions is an important part of a fighter's career in order to test their gas tank. And the fact that Drikas hasn't really done that could be decisive. Now I did say on the feet that it's Adesanya's fight to lose, but that might be a bit of an exaggeration. Before even entering the realm of MMA, Drikas was an esteemed kickboxer, in fact he's a second degree black belt. And with 9 knockouts in his professional career, I'd say it's not really a surprise. Now as I'm making this video, I have found out that Drikas is out due to an injury, and Sean Strickland of all people is scheduled to replace him to fight Adesanya. And whilst I love Sean's mic antics, I don't really expect him to hang with Adesanya on the feet inside that cage. So assuming that Adesanya gets another title defense under his belt, I'm sure we could expect to see the matchup with Drikas happen sometime early next year. Now if we hear the words and new bellow throughout the arena when the fight does happen, I for one will not be surprised.